On a London site laid waste by the first thousand pound bomb of the Blitz, the Duke of Edinburgh opens the most modern planetarium in the world and the first in the British Commonwealth. The dumbbell-shaped projector, which with its driving machinery weighs more than six tons, throws a crystal clear picture of the heavens onto the inside of the huge white dome. To give the planets their correct movement, separate projectors rotate in a complex pattern. We can be shown the Southern Cross. For the sky of any part of the world, as seen at any time, past, present or future, can be conjured up by this wonderful machine. From looking at the stars to reaching out towards them, here is man's newest satellite. The windows are solar batteries to power one of a pair of tiny radios. And here's the US Navy's 72-foot Vanguard rocket ready to launch the six-inch satellite on its lonely journey in the vacuum of space. The Navy's determined that after two failures, this launching will be a success. At the Cape Canaveral launching site, the boffins give the word, and on St. Patrick's Day, 1958, man-made satellite number four is airborne. The three-stage Vanguard rocket behaves perfectly, gradually building up speed to the 18,000 miles an hour needed to put the little satellite in orbit. In Washington, first calculations at the Vanguard Computing Center prove that the launching has been a complete success. Circling the Earth every two and a quarter hours at a maximum height of 2,500 miles, the highest yet, the satellite may stay in orbit for 10 years. 